Hello students, welcome to lecture 8 of atomic structure. Our topic is postulates of Bohr's theory or Bohr's model for hydrogen. Niels Bohr in 1913 Niels Bohr in 1913 explain hydrogen atom structure hydrogen atom structure and spectrum quantitatively Niels Bohr explain the hydrogen atom structure and hydrogen like atom structure means that atoms contain only one electron the hydrogen contain one electron and lithium plus two lithium plus two and helium plus so they are contain only one electron let me take the diagram for Bohr's model of hydrogen so this is a diagram for Bohr's model of atom and this is the nucleus and these are the orbits the first one is n1 and second orbit is n is equal to 2 third orbit is n is equal to 3 and fourth one n is equal to 4 or the first one is k orbit means k shell and next l and next m and n so these are the shells or orbits so in Bohr's model electrons are revolved around the nucleus in a circular paths called orbits or shells so these circular paths are called orbits or shells the electrons are revolved around the nucleus in a circular paths so these circular paths are called orbits or shells and each orbit has a fixed amount of energy hence these orbits are called energy orbits or energy shells so that orbits are called energy orbits or energy shells and these circular orbits are represented by principal quantum number n and these are designated as k l m n or 1 2 3 4 so these orbits are designated as k l m n or 1 2 3 4 and so on and if n value increases the size and energy of orbit also increases size and energy also increases means if we compare the first shell and fourth shell that fourth shell has more size and more energy than the first shell here the first shell size is this one and the fourth shell size is this one and the first shell n is equal to 1 and the fourth shell n is equal to 4 so if n value increases then the size and energy of orbit increases and the electrons revolve around the nucleus 
in a energy orbits or energy shells having fixed amount of energy having fixed amount of energy they neither emit nor absorb the energy hence these orbits are also called stationary orbits so that orbits are also called stationary orbits because that energy orbits or energy shells neither emit the energy nor absorb the energy then these orbits are called stationary orbits and the revolving electrons angular momentum is quantized and expressed as mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi so here m is equal to mass of electrons and v is equal to velocity of electron and r is equal to radius of orbit radius of orbit and h is equal to Planck's constant and n is equal to orbit number and if electron jump from lower orbit to higher orbit energy is observed and if electron jump from higher orbit to lower orbit energy is emitted for example here the lower orbit is n is equal to 1 and higher orbit for example I am taking n is equal to 4 So there is a electron in lower orbit if electron jump from lower orbit to higher orbit energy is absorbed and if electron jump from higher orbit to lower orbit energy is emitted so here the difference in energy delta e is equal to e2 minus e1 and is equal to h nu so delta e is equal to e2 minus e1 is equal to h nu and here e2 is equal to higher orbit energy and e1 is equal to lower orbit energy and mu is equal to frequency of radiation and the radius of stationary states of hydrogen the formula r n is equal to n square a naught so here a naught is equal to 52.9 picometers 52.9 picometers and n is equal to orbit number so or n is equal to n square a naught 
a naught is equal to 52.9 picometers and n is equal to orbit number so with this formula we can find out that radius of stationary states of hydrogen and for hydrogen like atoms or ions means isoelectronic with hydrogen for example helium plus and lithium plus 2 and beryllium plus 3 so these three are contain same number of electrons that is 1 it is equal to hydrogen so these are the hydrogen like atoms or ions so for this ions or n is equal to n square a naught by z and we know that a naught so or n is equal to 52.9 into n square divided by z so here z is equal to atomic number so this is the formula to find out the radius of stationary state of hydrogen like atoms or ions so this is about to postulates of Bohr's theory or Bohr's model for hydrogen next one limitations of Bohr's model Bohr's model cannot explain the spectra of atoms or ions having more than one electron cannot explain the spectra of atoms or ions having more than one electron for example helium lithium and lithium plus and so on so here helium contain two electrons and lithium contain three electrons and lithium plus contain two electrons so these are the atoms or ions which are contain more than one electron but Bohr can explain the spectra of atoms which are contain only one electron for example hydrogen so the hydrogen contain only one electron Bohr can explain the spectra of hydrogen but the Bohr cannot explain the spectra of atoms or ions having more than one electrons and Bohr model cannot explain fine structure in atomic spectra Bohr's model cannot explain the fine structure in atomic spectra and it cannot explain Gman effect and Stark effect. Gman effect means the splitting of spectral lines in magnetic field called Gman effect and Stark effect means the splitting of spectral lines in electric field called Stark effect and it cannot explain the dual nature of electrons dual nature of electrons and also it cannot explain the formation of chemical bonds and also it cannot explain 
why that angular momentum of electron is always nh by 2 pi and also it cannot explain why that angular momentum of electron is always nh by 2 pi it cannot give any explanation for this and also it cannot explain formation of molecules and geometry of molecules and shapes of molecules so it cannot explain the formation of molecules and geometry of molecules and shapes of the molecules so these are the limitations of Bohr's model of atom next one explanation of line spectrum of hydrogen this line spectrum of hydrogen can be explained quantitatively by using the Bohr's model and let me take here lower energy level and higher energy level so here the energy is observed the energy is observed if electron moves from lower orbit to higher orbit so the energy is observed if electron moves from lower orbit to higher orbit and the energy is emitted if electron moves from higher orbit to lower orbit the energy is observed when the electron moves from lower orbit to higher orbit and the energy is emitted when the electron moves from higher orbit to lower orbit and the energy gap between two orbits is delta E is equal to E final minus E initial so E F is the final and E I is the initial and delta E is equal to minus R H by N F square minus minus R H by N I square because En is equal to minus R H 1 by N square. So delta E is equal to minus into minus plus R H by N I square minus R H by N F square. and delta E is equal to RH is the common RH into 1 by NI square minus 1 by NF square is equal to RH is the Rydberg constant that value 2.18 into 10 power minus 18 joules into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square and we know that delta e is equal to h nu so nu is equal to 
डेल्टा ए बाय एच इज इक्वल डेल्टा ए इज द और एच इंटू वन बाय एन आई स्क्वायर माइनस वन बाय एन एफ स्क्वायर एंड डिवाइडेड बाय एच एंड वी नो दैट वैल्यूज ऑफ रिडबर्ग कांस्टेंट एंड प्लैंक्स कांस्टेंट सो म्यू इज इक्वल टू और एच वैल्यू टू पॉइंट वन एट इन टू टेन टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस एटीन जोल्स एंड डिवाइडेड बाय एच वैल्यू सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स टू फाइव इन टू टेन टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस थर्टी फोर जोल इन टू सेकेंड एंड इन टू वन बाय एन आई स्क्वायर माइनस वन बाय एन एफ स्क्वायर and mu is equal to if you do this calculation we will get 3.29 into 10 to the power of 15 into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square per second or hedges so mu is equal to 3.29 into 10 to the power of 15 into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square per second or hedges. This is the frequency of absorption and emission of electron. And in terms of wavelength, mu bar is equal to 1 by lambda is equal to mu by c is equal to three point this one two nine into ten to the power of fifteen per second and divided by c is the velocity three into ten to the power of eight meter per second into one by n i square minus 1 by n f square so if you do this calculation we will get that is mu bar is equal to 1.09677 into 10 to the power of 7 into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square per meter so mu bar is equal to 1.09677 into 10 to the power of 7 into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square per meter so here in the case of absorption nf is greater than ni and delta e will be positive and in the case of emission ni is greater than nf and delta e will be negative so in the case of absorption nf that nf is greater than ni and delta e will be positive and in the case of emission ni is greater than nf and delta e will be negative so here the frequency of absorption and emission of electron mu is equal to 3.29 into 10 to the power of 15 1 by ni square minus 1 by 
nf square the units hedges or per second and in terms of wavelength mu bar is equal to 1.096.77 into 10 to the power of 7 into 1 by ni square minus 1 by nf square the units per meter so in the case of absorption nf is greater than ni and delta e will be positive and in the case of emission ni is greater than nf and delta e will be negative This is the explanation of line spectrum of hydrogen by using Bohr's model.